hope I'm doing it right. Something there. All right. Hey, Tip. Miss Memphis, what's going on, lady? All right. I'm trying something. I'm trying this new setup. So I got. IG live on my phone try to do Facebook live for my personal profile I'm trying we are growing and becoming right I tell you child let me see what we got here let's see I said I was going to do an IG live based off of Y'all's response with the poll. I know that's right. Child, I'm going with the social media because it's, it's something to behold. I tell you that. <laughs> it's something. All right. Let me see here. I'm trying to do my... I think I got it right. Let's see, go live. Trying to do Facebook now. Try to share if you can. I'm going live now. Why won't let me go live? It won't let me click on anything on Facebook. I'm going to have to redo it. So we're going to talk about owner's draw. Owner's draw. That's what we're going to talk about today. Because we had most of the votes were for uh, bookkeeping. Nobody commented about taxes, but that's okay. I think owner's draw will cover both things. So I think we'll be all right. Let me see here. I'm going to try to do the live for my personal profile. See what happens. Let's see. Did I connect the video source and send my webcam? Uh, camera, video. I don't need to do a screen share. Yeah, I'll make stuff difficult. Let's see. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Share if you can, sharing your stories and all that good stuff. Whatever you can do, share, share, share. Let me see what I can. I'm scared to touch anything. I think I'm going to turn something off. Let's see if I can pin something up here. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. I sure appreciate it. So I'm going to put the title on here. See if I can pin it. If it'll let me pin it. Pin comment. There we go. All right. Cool. Got it. Can you see my comment? Cool. All right, I'm going to send this to some folks, see if I can get some more people on, see what we got here. Let me see. I hear my dog tip-tapping around the kitchen. All right, I'm sending some stuff around. All right, cool. 
All right, so we're going to talk about owner's draw. First of all, thank you guys for participating in the poll. I greatly appreciate that. So, although nobody commented about taxes, maybe y'all didn't want to hear about taxes. That's all right, too. All right. Hey, Tierra, how's it going? Uh, we're going to talk about owner's draw today. So, I've had an eventful day. I've been up since... 2 a.m. this morning. Thank you for the hearts. Um, I was in Atlanta. I had to go to Atlanta pick up uh, my son Jira and I had a GIP meeting with the organization called People Helping People. It was a great, great meeting. Um, shout out to Deidre and um, her siblings. Um, we had a great talk about um, growing general, you know, teaching uh, African Americans about generational wealth and how we can be of service to our community. It was really, really good. It's just good to be in the company of uh, other great people. Hey, Jazz, y'all share with as many people as you can. If you can, I'm still trying to figure out social media, but hopefully soon that will no longer be my portion. <laughs> delegate all right so i was trying to see if i could do a facebook live from my personal profile let me see if i could do it from gip financials uh while i'm still waiting on a couple people to come on in let me see what i got what can i do what can the old lady do let's try it You don't see me on Facebook. Like, I tried to do it on my personal profile, but for some odd reason, it wouldn't do it. Um, it was saying something about, I guess, my um whatever it is. I guess my um my laptop thing in my bubble. I don't I don't know. I have no idea. So I'm just gonna do it on IG. I'm gonna download it. And I'm sure it with everybody else. I bet <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> All right. So let's get. Thank you for the heart, child. All right. You check both personal GIP. <laughs> it is no longer my portion. You got to know what's your ministry and what's not your ministry, Jazz. That's, that's what I'm learning in 40 land. I'm learning that in 40 land. Hey, boo friend. Hey, Angie. What's going on, Ladybug? What's going on? I'm going to try one more time, Tiff, on my personal uh page. I feel like I'll get more reach that way. So let me see. I'm going to try it. I'm not pressing any other buttons on, on this phone because I feel like something else is going to go crazy. Right? There's always one <laughs> way to get the mission accomplished. I know that's right. I know that's right. Let me see here. I'm going to try it one more time. It's on my personal profile. I clicked on the live and it said something about connecting streaming software, but I got a webcam. And it says your browser is not allowing live producer access to your camera. Oh, let's see. Oh, I see here. Okay, I got a little pop-up. Anyway, child, I'll do that later. Uh, like I said, I'm going to download this video. I got my little ring light up. And we're going to be all right. Y'all share, share, share. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Because I want to be a woman of my word and do what I said I was going to do. All right, so we're going to talk about owner's draw. And... This is one of the things that um, I feel like would be a good compliment for taxes as well as bookkeeping because at the end of the day, we are all in business to what? To pay ourselves. But in order for us to do this, we got to do it the right way. Amen and amen. All right. Okay, Angie, y'all enjoy your dinner. Tell uh, Brapon, I said, what's up? All right. So I wanted to give y'all just a brief 
overview of what owner's draw is, what it's not. And based off of uh, what I've seen with my clients, some of the best practices on how to do it the proper way so the alphabet boys won't come looking for you. All right. So what in the world is owner's draw? So if you think about <clears throat> when you're starting your business, right? And for most of us, we have to put money in our business. And that's what we call owner's equity. Okay. And if you want a, a simple definition for equity, it's pretty much the value of a thing, right? So when you're contributing money to your business, that's what you call owner's equity. You're adding value to your business. So if you're putting money into your business, kind of think of it like an investment, right? You have to put money in your business for marketing, to get the word out, maybe to buy some products if you're selling um, items like e-commerce or whatnot. And you have to put money out to generate income, get a return on your investment, right? And so once you make a profit, then you have the opportunity to pull that money out, that profit. Let me make sure I'm clear. To pull that profit out of your business if you need to use it for personal expenses. That's what we call the owner's draw. Okay, so you're basically pulling out a portion of your equity, right? So say if you start off with like $1,000 and from that $1,000 you generate, um, let's say $5,000 because you got it like that, right? So with that initial $1,000 plus the $5,000, you now have $6,000 in equity, okay? So when you pull money out of that 6 k that is considered your draw, whatever that amount is, okay? That's what we call owner's draw. And so in a lot of circumstances, most of my clients are either sole proprietors Single member LLCs, which from a tax perspective are taxed as sole proprietors. Or they might have a partnership, which is a multi-member LLC or an S-Corp. Okay, so we're going to be talking about owners draw from those three, I guess you say three perspectives. Sole proprietorship, partnership, and S-Corp. Okay, so... When you're talking about paying yourself, depending on your entity, you can either do an owner's draw or you can actually pay yourself a salary, okay? There's um, pros and cons to both, but let me kind of walk you through the difference between an owner's draw and a salary, okay? Thank you again for those hearts. Y'all keep sharing, share it to your stores or however we do it on Instagram. Old ladies still don't know how to do Instagram, just saying. Just make sure you get the word out. All right. So when we're talking about owner's draw, I got my notes, so I'm looking down. When we're talking about owner's draw, that's the money, like I said, that you're pulling out directly from your business. Okay. If you're doing an owner's draw, know that the money that you're pulling out, you're eventually going to have to pay taxes on, on the back end. Now, this part, I'm going to try to make sure that I explain this clearly so it won't be confusing. If you are a sole proprietor or a single member, single member LLC and you're using the Schedule C for your tax form, you're going to pay personal income tax or self-employed tax on the net profit. So on that Schedule C form, you get your gross revenue, all your expenses, whatever your profit is at the bottom, regardless of how much money you pull out for your owner's draw. That's how much you're going to be responsible for on your 1040. So what I'm telling you is from an owner's draw perspective, your owner's draw is not considered an expense. Okay. So basically what you're doing, you're pulling, you're kind of like making it for lack of a better term, advanced payments on the profit that you earn from your business. That's basically what that is. So I just want to make sure that I'm crystal clear about that. Okay. So I'm going to say it again. If you are a sole proprietor or a single member LLC and you're using the Schedule C, Schedule C tax form, whatever your net profit is at the end of the tax year, 
that's what you're going to be responsible for for tax time. So that's why it's important that you have a bookkeeper or an accountant that's there to help you reduce your tax liability. So you have to pay as, you know, we won't want you overpaying your taxes because I have to make sure that I frame my words correctly because <laughs> I don't want to make it seem like, you know, uh, we're trying to take advantage of anything. But if you're a business owner, that's the purpose of taxes. Taxes are basically there to support business and to help, you know, generate income, stimulate the economy, all that good stuff. So you want to make sure that you're only paying the amount of taxes that you're responsible for. Makes sense. So you got to make sure that you have somebody in place to help you ensure that you're, um, that you have all your deductions and all that good stuff like that. So that's owner's draw. So remember, with owner's draw, it's kind of like 1099 income. You have to pay income taxes on it on the back end. Okay. And with the salary, with the salary, of course, you will have to use like payroll software, and which is cool because if you decide to uh, take your income out through salary, then all of your income taxes and things of that magnitude will already be taken care of. And you'll get that income back um uh it's kind of like a second paycheck right so just kind of think of it that way but in most cases your salary will be with either a partnership or s corp with the s corp um the owner has to have uh has to have a salary via payroll okay so that's why i was saying before we're going to talk about it from those three um, major entities, sole proprietor, partnership, and S corp. Okay, so if in most cases the salary will be ideal for a partnership because it's going to be more than one owner, or S corp. Salary is mandatory in S corp. Okay. So with that being said, I want to talk about some best practices when you're thinking about how much money is you're generating income, how much money you're pulling out and how to do it the right way. Cause I'm going to be completely honest with you. This is what messed a lot of people up during the PPP because the PPP was for what payroll protection program. And what a lot of people did, they created these business bank accounts and they just started just, running debit cards on all types of expenses. And what they should have done was kept a consistent paper trail. So that's the number one best practice that I want to recommend to you. If you're going to do an owner's draw, make sure that it is consistent. Okay? So be thinking, like, if you're going to do a monthly amount, of course, you know, you have to... Think about, you know, your cash flow and things like that. But if you're going to do a monthly withdrawal, do a monthly withdrawal. If you're thinking about um, a particular set amount, do a particular set amount, okay? Because God forbid if you have to do an audit or even if you if you did the PPP or the EIDL loan and, you, and they call for your records because I think you have to keep, I know for the EIDL, I believe it's six years, five or six years that you have to keep your records intact. So they're going to be looking at that. So make sure that if you're going to pay yourself, do it on a regular, try to do it as consistently as possible, just like you would be if you were working your nine to five with your payroll, with your paycheck. Okay. And then also too, um, and I know in this particular case, this would be, in most situations for nonprofits, but I highly recommend that all businesses do it as well. Make sure that you have a financial policy, especially that outlines like you're going to for this particular year. You can always, you know, adjust it um, per year, but you're going to pay yourself this amount per month, this amount per year, depending on cash flow. Try to make it as specific as possible. Like if you have a baseline that you want to pay yourself like $10,000 a year, fine. You want to divide that by 12, cool. 
And if you want to put a caveat in there, like if the profits um, are adjusted by this percentage, you'll adjust your compensation by this percentage. It just looks good on paper that you have things already in place. And like I said, you got to think long term too, because if you are thinking about scaling your business and you're trying to apply for capital, banks are going to be looking for that. They're going to be looking at your bank statements, not just your tax returns. They're going to be looking at your bank statements too to see the type of activity that you're doing in your business account. So keep that in mind. Be consistent. Next thing, if you have a sole proprietorship or single member LLC and you are still working your full-time job, you can use your full-time job to offset that additional uh, taxable income by adjusting your W-4, okay? Um, I used to be a church musician and most churches do not um, do W-2s, they do 1099s. So what I had to do when I was teaching back then, I had to adjust my W-2 for that, for that additional income. So that's an option for you if you want to do that. I know, especially like in my current job, since now it's tax time, I get a lot of my teammates that are like, I need to adjust my W-4 my tax preparer said I need to start taking out an additional amount, stuff like that. That's totally fine. Just know you can adjust your tax withholdings at any time during the year. Okay? You can do that at any time during the year. You can print that W-4 out online, fill it out, give it to your HR department at your job. And also, there's an additional worksheet that goes with... um uh, if you have an additional, you know, additional income with that W-4, they have additional worksheets that you can, you know, work that out and then put it on the front of the W-4 as well. So that's an extra caveat. Okay. And what that'll do, that'll give you an extra peace of mind. So when it's time for you to file your taxes and you haven't been paying taxes on your business income, you got an extra cushion because you've been taking out a little bit more from your full-time job. You can absolutely positively do that. And if you can do that, I would highly recommend it. Okay? So that's the next thing. If you choose not to do that, <laughs> make sure that you are, just like with your tithe, right? Make sure that you are taking a percentage of your business profits and setting it aside, preferably in a separate account to pay your taxes at, you know, during tax time. Um, Self-employed tax right now is 15.3%. So I would recommend at least 20%. So at the end of the month, once you're looking at your profit and loss statement and you see that you got a profit, if you're going to pull your money out, let's say you're going to pull um a thousand dollars out to compensate yourself i will say uh two hundred dollars of that needs to go to your uh your tax account so that means you'll be giving yourself eight hundred dollars all right so like i said at the end of the day we want to be proactive when it comes to your taxes okay so that's another thing that you can do Again, I always be thinking long term. This is why you need someone on your team to help you think long term. If you're looking at trying to expand your business or whatever you're trying to do, it's up to your bookkeeper, your accountant, your CPA to be thinking as we're going through your numbers every month, how we're going to get you to your goal. That's our job. That's what, that's what you pay us to do. Okay? So all we ask, all I'm asking is just be honest with us as far as what you want to do. And we're going to have some dialogue. I'll, you know, give you some feedback and things like that. If there's some things that I might not um, be familiar with, of course, you know, I'm going to find out. And we're going to make sure at the end of the tax year that you are saving money and not paying out anything additional. Okay? And I'll pop your hand. 
if you are not doing what you're supposed to do <laughs> with your taxes, okay? So always be thinking about long-term because we want to make sure your numbers and your tax forms and your bank accounts and stuff look a certain way, okay? Next, make sure that you take out your compensation after all of your business expenses are paid for. Then we say, let me pull it closer. Make sure you pay yourself after all your business expenses are paid for. Okay? You got to do that. Because what you don't want to have happen is that you are low on cash flow and you paid yourself. And then what if you need to re-up on supplies or something like that? You can't do it because you've paid yourself. If you need to reduce what you said you're going to pay yourself every month, do that. Because at the end of the day, you got to stay in business. So it's all right to, you know, sacrifice a little bit for long-term gain. Okay? And then if that is the case, if you notice that you may either you didn't bring in enough revenue or you ended up paying out a little bit more than expected, that's when we need to strategize and start thinking about, did you... Uh, they look at your accounts receivable. Did everybody pay your invoice on time? Things like that. So, again, that's why you need a teammate. All right. And also, you need to know the entity that um, best fits your business. Because that's where the owners draw and the salaries are going to come into play. And especially for compliance, especially if you're an escort. Like I said, with escort, you have to be on payroll. The owner has to be on payroll. Okay? So, again, I'll say it again. If you are a sole proprietor or a single-member LLC, single-member LLCs are taxed at sole proprietorships. So, the the plan for you is to just do a draw. Okay? If your net profit goes beyond $40,000, then we need to start talking about changing your entity structure. And we got to deal with... Uh, Brother Tunstall, Mike Tunstall, G1 Business Group, and he's going to walk you through um, converting your LLC to an S-Corp, and then we'll put you on salary, all that good stuff. If you are a partnership, if you are one of the partners in a business, there's two ways that you can do this. You can do a draw, or they have something called a guaranteed payment. Now, granted, if you want to do anything like this in a partnership where you have another person with you in business, you got to have it in writing. You got to have a partnership agreement in writing. Non-negotiable. You got to have one. Because you want to make sure that you have outlined how much each partner is going to get at the end of the tax year or how y'all going to get paid and stuff like that. You got to have that in writing to avoid any drama going down the road. And if you have a partnership, Lord, I hope you got an account or bookkeeper. <laughs> you need a non-biased opinion looking at your money. Do I, do I need to pull the phone? Do I need to pull the phone up? Okay. All right. Well, and there's that. So, and the S-Corp, like I said, if you have an S-Corp, you have to, you as the owner, have to be on salary. Now, how much salary you're going to pay yourself? I know um, in our Save My Small Business, not Save My Small Business, I think it was, uh, no, the my uh, first tax return, filing your business tax return, Mike suggested at minimum 30% of um, your business profit needs to be paid to you in salary, Okay. You can also do what they call um, an owner's dividend. That's kind of like the equivalent to a draw. Um, but they most uh, tax accounting professionals suggest if you're an S-Corp that you just keep it in the salary because what you don't want to do is have double taxation. Because if you pull anything out in that dividend, that's subject to personal tax as well. Okay? And here's another thing that I see all the time, and I got this last, for such a time as this, when I'm pulling pulling 
uh, transactions in QuickBooks. And if Diamond's on here, my assistant, she'll let you know as well. If there's any transactions on there that you don't remember what they were for, I'm telling you now, you need to put them as owner's draw. And this is why. Because if you cannot account for it, the IRS is going to assume that that is personal. What you don't want to do is have a transaction that you don't that you have categorized as business expense you don't have paperwork for it because that's a red flag so what i say i guess for damage control purposes put it as an owner's draw okay things like i, I know things happen but um cash withdrawals at atms mm -mm. The best way I would suggest that you do an owner's draw is to do a transfer between the business bank account to your personal bank account. Because why? Because in most cases, they have a memo section and you can put in there details about the owner's draw. Okay. Or if you have paper checks, do a paper check. It's all about the paper trail, y'all. It's all about the paper trail. Okay. And so, like I said, even if you have, if you have Excel, if you have QuickBooks, um, and you don't have an account, you're just, you know, if 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 you utilize our QuickBooks setup services, then yes, this is what you do as well. Hey, hey there, Mika. Oh, I'm waving at you. So you make sure that if you're looking through those transactions in QuickBooks or your account software or Excel, you're like, child, I don't even remember what, what I bought. Just categorize it as owner's draw. Just, it is what it is. Thank you for the hearts. Okay? So I hope that this helped you guys um, as far as talking about owner's draw. Like I said, it's, it's, it's I say February. It's April the 2nd. Taxes are due April the 18th. If you have a sole proprietorship, uh, yeah, if you have a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC, the Schedule C is filed with your 1040. That's due on the 18th. If you have a partnership or S Corp, child, you're still being overdue. And I pray that you have an extension, <laughs> an extension filed. And I'll be honest too, if you know good and well that you're not going to have your 1040 done on time, go ahead and electronically file your extension now. Go to the IRS, irs.gov, and they should have a section on there about um, 2021 taxes, how to electronically file um, your extension. But keep in mind, if you owe taxes for 2021, even though you filed the extension, that does not mean um, that if you owe, they're still going to charge you interest and penalties after the due date okay so just know that so but having that extension filed is just good for grace sake all right and then hey if you have not filed your taxes yet i i don't know i don't know how many ig lives I need to have for you to I need I'm gonna do you like I do with kids at school. I'll give you the deacon hand. Won't you come? Won't you come? Because if you hadn't done your taxes now, you know you don't want to do them. You know you don't want to go through your box of receipts. Just bring them on over here. <laughs> so we can help you get it done. And you can have one less thing off of your to do this done and again y'all taxes are no joke this is the irs we're talking about the alphabet boys you want to make sure that you have an expert helping you especially if you are a small business you don't want to be in a situation where you're stuck with a humongous tax bill because you aren't aware of the deductions that you could have used to reduce your tax liability you don't want to be in that situation. You really don't. Okay, so the services I provide, $250 QuickBooks setup. I give you two hours of my time 
to walk you through your QuickBooks subscription and I'm going to show you how to categorize your transactions automatically and I'm also going to show you the reports that you need to pull so you can um, download those for your tax preparer and also um, in most situations since we have small business I'm also going to give you a, a brief tutorial about accounts receivable setting up your invoices and things like that because most of my um, clients as far as their accounts payable that's their bill payments and expenses they just get those things done bill directly through their business account so you don't really have to do anything extravagant to pay your bills most of those things are automatically debited but as far as billing your clients oh you need a system you need to make sure your invoices and stuff are intact for that so you got that enter your tax prep that's $2,100. And like I said, yes, I know it's a grip. But what that is, you want, you want me to take your big old box of receipts and get those things in QuickBooks organized nice and pretty for tax time. Normally that takes about um, 30 to 60 days on average. If everything is Scott clean, if everything with no gotchas, in the midst of us trying to figure out what's going on all right so that's twenty one hundred dollars and if you want monthly bookkeeping services you get three tiers if you have up to 75 transactions that's 175 76 to 150 transactions that's 350 dollars if you have over 150 transactions that's 500 dollars a month and if you do the monthly bookkeeping services and if you commit to that uh, for 12 months, guess what? You won't have to do end of year tax prep because that's basically what we're doing every month. So by, if it, and if we commit to that by January, February, I'll run those reports, make sure everything's nice and clean and pretty. And we can send you right on off to Brother Tom so he can go and get you hooked up. Okay. That's the name of the game. All right. So I hope that this helped. Thank y'all again for just being great participants and all that good engagement and stuff like that. Pray for me and my social media. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. And um, if you're interested in being a content creator, um, I'm still taking um, inquiries, stuff like that. So I've been trying to keep um, keep my candidates updated as far as like what my expectations are and stuff like that and things that I'm looking for. Interviews will begin um, the week of April 16th, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what I told you. <laughs> so it'll be after Easter. Yep, after Easter. So like I said, I hope that this helped. Uh, feel free to schedule a consultation with me. Go to www.gipfinancials.com. At the website, the top right, you'll see schedule a consultation. Free 30-minute strategy call. We'll get you hooked up. All right, y'all. So again, this is Sonya Jones with GIP Financials. Your Mr. Me, I give money. And as always, get in position. See you guys later.